Hello, Kishori. Hello, Lilou. So this okay, is we're... session two. That's right. And before we start, we're going to talk a little bit about what to expect from one session to the next. Sometimes we think, oh, if I still have uh, the rosacea or I still have the headache, I'm not getting anywhere, right? Mm -hmm. And to me, the most dense of all our bodies is the physical body. And because of this, we may have to deal with other stuff at different level. Suffice to say that stress is always a big component in illness. So we may say, well, I tried the zero point and it gave me uh, some peace in moments of panic. Have you noticed that? Yeah. Yes? Yeah. Okay, so it's nothing to write home about, you know. Somebody would ask you, how are you doing? Oh, I'm a little less stressful in moments of panic. It's nothing. But for us to live the panic and the worrying, it's a little bit of a direction, you know. And our experience here is not about healing, it's about self-love. Yeah, and I've noticed that all over the place. So I've noticed instances where I was not, and I've and I've really been like filling this body with love, and 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 really seeing for the first time unconditional love, N not loving my body for the way it is and only the parts that I like, or you know, but just really em embracing all aspects. And so that's been that's been tremendous. And also, I had some kind of dreams where usually I don't remember my dreams. One of which recently was that, you know how on your books, uh, Essence, the Essence book, you, I don't know if you have it here, but you have like this thing that goes like that. Yes. Yeah, I have it here. And let me show you. For me, yeah, well, this is what I saw in my dream, but it stopped about uh, at height level. So it was like, it was going like this and then it stopped here. It stopped at here instead of continuing down and then f f full circle. And what I really saw is that I intellectualize so much the things and when I stress it's all in the head that I feel my, I felt like my energies might be not really circulating throughout my whole body in a healthy way. This is another subject which we will talk, uh, work with today. It's about anchoring. You know how people say, oh, you're not grounded, or you're too much in the head to me. It's a mistake to say this. And I use the word mistake because have you ever seen anybody who's very grounded and we tell them, oh, you're not enough in the head? Never. So if you see any concept that one is good and the other is bad, you know it's polarized and it is not part of a, of a matrix. It's, it's not at zero point. What we want to do is work with what we have instead of thinking that what we have is not good and need to be changed. So if you have an active mind, you know, now uh, lots of uh, literature is coming out about those kind of people who have a lot of mental energy and often they're called hypersensitive people because not only do they have an active brain activity, but also the limbic system, the emotional side is overactive. So that creates the stress. Mm. I found it's a lot better to be with what is than to try to change. Yeah. So if you have an active mind, go in it. Be active with your mind and bring the zero point inside the brain. So sometimes you can think of the limbic system in the back that's really, really active. And it sends like waves of energy to the frontal lobe, which is a more like front, you know, like, serious part of ourself and you can just imagine the zero point that they coexist instead of impeding or one is good the other is bad you know and we can dream at night you can ask those two parts of your uh, brain to harmonize not to change to be as is and to harmonize. This is the whole point of my vision of healing is to, 
is coexistence. Zero point is coexistence. It's you take like the frontal lobe, which would be a very yang energy, with the limbic system, which is very yin, emotional. And instead of saying to the emotional, shut up, you say, hey, let's see if you guys can just coexist. And and you you even in meditation you can bring the prana in the back because you will notice that the breath rarely goes there. The breath rarely focus on the back in the limbic system because it's it's like we think it's too busy, so we don't bring presence and air and breath and prana there. So we know that the rosacea is hasn't been cooled off yet. No, I like to no. talk about cool off, okay? So instead of saying, hasn't been cooled off yet, when, when? When we say this, we make it hotter, right? And we a, a good sentence is, it hasn't been cooled off yet. Uh-huh. And when you add this yet, it means that it could or could not be. It's not like it's never going to be because it hasn't happened yet. Do you see what I mean? Uh-huh. Um it's about being with it. So let's muscle test that with your rosacea, you were with it when we first started from 1 to 10, and 10 would be 100% with it. One, 1 on 10. When I muscle test, it goes 0, 1. Okay, now you are with it 1, 2, 3 on 10. So you may think, oh, I have 7 to go. This is not. Look. It never works in a linear point. First of all, because it's a matrix, you can have quantum jumps in it. You know, so it could go from three to eight. It's not like a linear. But what what we're doing this for is to tell you, look, you're walking in the direction of being with it. And we've we've made some progress. That's why it's, we have to give up the 10 on 10 because it backs us off at, Two on ten. Do you see what I mean? Of course we want to heal, but in yoga we practice this. When you enter a zone of tension in yoga, if you put too much pressure, you know, oh, my shoulder hurts, I'm going to stretch, stretch, you create more tension. And if you don't apply the right tension, you, you don't release the tension either. And the whole mind of the yogi or the yogini is about right tension. Just enough. So there's an openness that happens and not too much so we create another tension. You understand? So this is a way of looking at how we approach this. So today, because we're working with a convergence, a zero point, convergence means I'll show you exactly here. It it means it means this. It's it's a vortex where the the darkness and the light all go at the same place and create mm. uh, energy in the center. For me, that's zero point. Okay. So we say with this three on we we will we'll use this uh, this rule about how present are you to your zasea? Okay, as our uh, gauge on on where we're going. So today. First, first time you were one on ten with yourself having rosacea. Now we're three on ten. So three on ten, we're going to try to put that at zero point. And mm-hmm. by putting what we have, at, we build up the energy in the center essence, with, which will be our healer. So then I ask how many a protocol we need to do, staying really in line with um, my work with DNA. And we have just two protocols. So it's... When we work with this kind of work, sometimes it lasts like an hour and a half. Sometimes it can only be half hour. Whatever it takes, we are working like a yogi, applying the right tension for what is now. Mm-hmm. Okay? Mm-hmm. I used to have studied when I was younger with an incredible healer in uh, Malibu in California. And that guy used to say, if the therapist is not well, the therapy is not good. And when a therapist goes beyond what is necessary for today, the therapist starts feeling that, and the therapy is not good anymore. You understand? So 
Okay. Just go with what is. So our first um, protocol is in the, my first book here, DNA Demystified, and um, I'll read it in English. I, I have yeah, now. Is, <laughs> so I, it, it was first published in French, but uh, translated it in English, and now it's in Spanish and German. Good. But I, I won't try to read German. <laughs> No, no. We'll speak English and French. Okay, so our first protocol is the protocol five in my book, and it's the protocol on health. And that protocol, I got inspired to do it uh, through uh, Drunvalo, oh. uh, who spoke about those children who uh, were, born of mo were born of mothers who had AIDS. And after six months of life, they had no trace of AIDS left in their bloodstream, and then they did some DNA work on this, these children because they were popping up, you know, in Russia and America, and uh, he did that in the Dominican Republic. And it was shown that they had four extra codons activated in their DNA. And he said, he thought, oh, they have come on the planet. That information is available, and I will command it for myself and he said it worked for him so I said I thought to myself if it works for Brunvalo it works for me right yeah. so I commanded it and I went around people who were coughing in my face and everything and I got a cold and I thought what is the difference and I figured that Brunvalo had the program in his DNA uh -huh. to be able to command this and for it to work. You see, for me, it's never like, oh, he's good and I'm a sub-citizen and it cannot work for me because I'm not uh, so-and-so. No, no, no. If it works for them, it's because they have the program. It For me, it's that simple. We are ruled by our programming from childhood and everything. I agree, but also by our inner DNA. So I made up a program for people like me to whom it wouldn't work, but since the information is available, and one thing that struck, struck me very much when I had read this about those children of AIDS is the question Drunvalo asked was, imagine a society where being afraid of sickness wouldn't exist because they challenged their, the cells of those children to many different viruses and they never got sick. And I thought, Whoa, we wouldn't we won't know what to do. Hmm. You know, we won't know what to do. And so it this whole protocol addressed the fact that this information is available in the social matrix, could be transferred to you, that you could have a health program, maybe not the same for codons as those children. Codons are part of the DNA that form the programs in the genes, and we use very little of them. You know, but I started to think most of my work was from a woman's per perspective. And I started to think if we were to choose to be sick, why? We would have a good reason. And in my protocol, I made a whole list of those reasons why being sick would be better than not being sick. For instance, I... I, I'm going to go through it now. This is but very I, uh, pioneer conversations here. Yes, it's a, it's really, I, I have to say to a woman's point of view, okay, because uh, if you're a mother, it's funny, I saw the movie yesterday, Motherhood, I don't know if you've seen it, but that girl lives in New York and she's running all the time, you know, and one of my questions is, does the person know how to rest without being sick? Right? And that's a very woman's way. It's like if you have children, sometimes the only time you can have some time off is if you're sick. Right? So even if kids bring these new programs on the planet that you could uh, be healthy all the time, you may not want to be healthy all the time. So I wanted this to apply. And I have to say that now I don't have colds like I used to. Mm -hmm. And it made a big difference on a, a lot of people, but it also installed in me a new vision of what my body could do. Because 
The first time I worked with the point zero in health, I had a cold and it was the middle of the night and I connected with the true emotion I had behind my cold and the emotion was that I didn't trust my body. And I said, I choose to be healthy even though I don't trust my body. Mm-hmm. And I had an instant a fever and the cold broke. Ten days later, it was at the time in my life I had a lot of colds. Ten days later, cold again. And then I said, I choose to be healthy even though I don't believe I can do it twice. You know, it's to mm. stay with what is instead of thinking that what is is impeding our health. Mm. Right? So in this in, in installing a new health code. I ask if we, uh, it's appropriate to, to install the program which provides access to perfect health. And perfect health is very different from one person to the next. That's why I put that, because it's not like a healthy, healthy for me is not healthy for you. It's not the same thing for everybody. And uh, do I need to put this in a specific address? No. So if I don't name a chromosome or a gene means it's going straight into the random DNA. And then I ask if the person has a genetic code that allows her to rest without being sick. No, you don't. Now don't think, oh, I've got to fix this. It's just the data in my big matrix. Remember this. So it means that for you, the rosacea is giving you a chance to rest. Right. I'm sure it's certainly changing some of your habits, isn't it? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, it's it's serving its purpose. I know. So that's okay. So don't worry about it. It's just one data. It is nothing more than a. Do you know what I mean? It's not like oh, I've got to fix that because if I don't fix this, the no, no. We're trying to get acquainted with Rosacea. Mm, no, that's, that's the work since the first session. There's definitely... Okay. I, I, I'm being I, grateful I, since then for it. So there's been a yeah. big shift. Test if the person has a genetic code that allow her to be loved without being sick. No. That means that probably when you were a kid, your mother... Uh, brought you jam and bread if you were sick, you know, and we've associated that when we need love, it's better to be sick because we'll have some. Uh So be it. We're not changing anything. We're just naming what's in it for you to be. What's the power in being sick? And the other one is, can you trust your body so that it can be healthy? No. That's exactly the thing I had had there. I, I didn't trust my body. Then I go through my list testing and I have... To be part of your genetic family without being sick is no. So when you hit rosacea, it goes into a program with the uh, mother's side or father on father's side, you know. So that's it. We name it. We have a father and mother's side. And, you know, we're influenced by parts of this. There's nothing to be done about it. But the thing is, it's interesting to see that we can just name it and be with it, okay? And uh, there's a harmful program in duality that could interfere with the new program, so we name it, because they have seen in DNA a response in the body that sometimes the genes, they send a message, and something either from the RNA or another gene or the random DNA comes and blocks, blocks it. So I name it, and it goes right into my, everything I name fills up this program. Imagine this program today is this, and every little dot has an influence on the other. So that's what we're aiming for. Okay. Plus, here, there's a blockage that stops you from being 100% sealed. I didn't know how better to word this sealed People always ask me, what do you mean? It means to have really healthy boundaries that uh, you don't catch other people's stuff, you know? Okay. It, could be just, it could be just a, a viruses like the cold, but it could be other stuff too. Because let's just for one second think that rosacea would be a question of stress. Then if we are like a sponge and we pick up other people's stuff, then we process it for them too. 
let's say you're around your mother and she's really sad, and you come out of there really sad, and you spend three hours being sad, right? And then you say, oh, go to a walk or yoga class or whatever. You have processed her emotion, but it did her no good. Yeah. It did her no good because it's hers to process, not yours. So there's being, picking up on other people's stuff doesn't help them, sadly enough, because sometimes we really do a lot of it. And especially we, if we have an, an we active... Pick up on it, do we pick up on it when we're compassionate? I'm going to tell you something. I, you know, I am an hypersensitive person, and one of the uh, symptoms of hypersensitivity is that we have a 360-degree radar. Like, we pick up what's not said, and, and to be able to not be caught in it, it's a work of a great master soul. I'm saying this because in the spiritual path, We always say meditate and calm the mind. That's very easy for those of us who are not pick-uppers. But if you pick up, you even pick up what the other person is thinking next to you while they meditate. So it's a huge job to know what's yours. My best way for this was to become more and more familiar with my essence mm -hmm. and to ask essence to take its rightful place inside of me. And it filled It's, it wins over other people's stuff because essence is more familiar. Compassion starts with oneself. When I am compassionate, present, honoring my own essence, automatically, and I'm authentic, automatically I trigger authenticity in other people. And... When the other day I was with somebody I used to be very intimate with and was in total reaction all the time with. I saw that person and I started to go really wired. Yeah. But then I thought, yeah. I wasn't wired five minutes ago. We're just skiing. It's springtime. And then it was incredible for me because I knew this didn't have the vibration of my essence. Uh -huh. So I was very tolerant because I was not losing myself in it. It didn't change my inner peace. I was aware of it. I could feel the tension. And before, all I ever wanted when I would feel tension. Sorry, this, this is the live. <laughs> before, all I ever wanted when I felt tension was to have the other person change feel better so that they would relax and I would be feeling relaxation around me instead of tension. Now that I am a lot more at ease with my own inner tension and I can just work more with convergence and essence, if I feel this, I allow myself my own reaction and stay with myself. The more I stay with me, the a better person I become. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's like trying to fight ego doesn't work. Fill yourself up with essence. There won't be any room for ego. Or when ego comes with its reactive behavior, it feels so non-essential that you, you, it's like tiresome to go with it. So compassion for others, to me, I have seen so many people trying to be compassionate to love other people and they don't love themselves so me what i get in their love and in their compassion is their self-hatred you know so it looks compassionate but underneath if you have a radar you pick up that the person is unable to stay with them so they'd rather be with you than themselves mm -hmm. It's all these questions are very tricky because once you start going a little deeper with what's really authentic in your because try to be compassionate from a point of view of will in presence of a horse, he will kick you. If you're with a healer horse, a very sensitive horse is gonna say, What is this bullshit anyway? <laughs> you know, it, to a horse, if you're not authentic, you're dangerous. 
I love, I love horses and I rode for 10 years and actually a few days ago I, I keep on, on, on bumping into uh, healers that work with horses and I work with animals to, to heal people also. So I'm thinking of riding again or being close again to horses. Well, what's happening is if you uh, go back to horses work, try everything that is with the natural horsemanship. And you can read the, the Tao of Equus. Or in French, it's the Tao de Cheval. It's the whole approach of Linda Kohanov about the sensitivity of horses. And she's like a pioneer in that field. However, there are so many books written on the subject of that relationship with na in the world of natural horsemanship. But it's, it's totally different. Like even in, uh, I'm making a little breach here, but the, the riding I practice is called connected riding. And most of it is on the ground. And you learn how to walk properly and the horse aligns with you. Oh, and then when you finally get on top of the horse, you already have the connection. Mm -hmm. And it's an incredible experience because what you did on the ground, you continue to do on, the, on top of the horse. That's why it's called connected riding. But also as the horse, it's like doing yoga with the horse. And as the horse gets more aligned, your own body gets more aligned, and it gets harder and harder to pretend to be a good person or a aligned person if you're not. And the whole aim in connected riding is once you get it, then you lose it, and then you get it again. Mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not about perfection. It's about alignment. And for that, you have to work with what is. And... The approach to in connected riding is really that before you do the action, if you are aligned, if you're well, then the action is easy. So before you mount the horse, you've done work on the ground and your horse is aligned, you're aligned, and then you get on and, you, you know, it's very, very different. So it's the same thing with illness. It's the same thing. We need to have some connected riding looks boring. And it takes a, a while before you connect. And you cannot force connection with the horse. Right? It's the same relationship with health. I got All, it. You know? It's, it's like a... So I understand what you're, what you're saying through the analogy of the horse. Yeah. Okay. Cool. But I have uh, in the, in the, my health, um, I, I, I have one more data I want to put in this protocol, and it has to do with an infection. And um, it uh, doesn't mean you have had an infection or you have an infection. It just means that in the program, the body, the innate intelligence says there has been an infection at one point. And sometimes we'll go test if we need to know when, and, it, and I test and it says yes. So uh, then I go 0 to 5, 5 to 10, 10 to 15, 10, 11, 12, 13. So you're going to have to divulge your age now. What year were you born? 77. 77 plus 13 is uh, in nine, what month? August. Okay, August 90, August, September, it's January 91. That's, that's weird, Look, there you go. When I was 13 in January 91, where was I? Well, I was back from the US and that's, uh, that's after, uh, that's after the divorce of my parents. And I mean, I had a lot of things happening when I was 11, 12, but not at 13, I don't remember. Okay, so when you were 13, you, uh, you, were born, you said you were born in 77, huh? 77, yeah. Okay, so it's really in the 90, 1991. Where were you that Christmas? It's when I, I have, it's the Christmas season, 1991, something happened. It's uh, in when you were 13, which grade were you in? 13, I was probably just on 6e, 5e, beginning of. Uh, I was in probably, France? Yeah, in France, oh. yeah, yeah. Okay, so do you remember the Christmas season? Did you go skiing or something? No. Mm, you were living where? I was living in Nantes. 
with my mother and I would have to ask her. She probably would remember. Doesn't, okay. Doesn't matter. You may have had some uh, chest, usually in January, with, if we have an infection, it's related to a cold, but it's really, sometimes, it's really funny why, uh, sometimes it could There's have been... There's a lot been... of obsession at that time, I mean, a lot of upsetting things, so, you know, my dad okay. left, he went for, for a few years abroad, for, I have. I wasn't. I felt like abandoned. I, I, my parents were divorcing. There was somebody else in my mom's life. I didn't have any brothers and sisters. My uh, my okay, grandpa that, died. I mean, it was on and on and on at that time. So. Okay. So in that time, there was an infection. It got taken care of through uh, medication, but that is the problem with sometimes with medication is that it goes away. Everybody is happy, but. Especially vaccines are even more difficult for the body to deal with because it's hidden. The body is made of all these small places, you know, and it stays. It's like we call them residues of medication. It's not like you 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 have like a, sometimes I used to work in kinesiology like this, and I would do residue of drugs, and I would treat somebody for this, and they get stoned during the treatment. Because did that, like, you know, you'd smoke a joint and you'd still have a little bit of pot inside of you. It's resin and, uh, it, you know, it's the body doesn't always eliminate everything it has taken. So there's a residue there on a cold. That doesn't mean anything. Doesn't mean you have to go cleanse. I didn't say yeah. you instead to I do a I what to do with that. <laughs> Don't do anything. We're, we're just saying it's part it, of yeah. this big program. Okay. That was our first protocol. And now my second protocol is in my second book that is called DNA and the Quantum Choice. Okay. And it's the protocol. Um, 22, and so I must also test, you know, it starts 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. And 22 has to do with the brain, intelligence. I, I, when I made up this protocol, I thought the brain, before we used to think there was one kind of intelligence. When I 